let's start this video off with Andrew Walker's favorite saying. Let's start it off with a thank you, Jim. How about that? Not firebending. How about a thank you, Jim? Thanks, Jim. Because it's kind of funny, isn't it? Like, this team... I'm going to go out there and say this right before the video even begins. I guess the video already began, right? But this is not really going to be a video about the game. It's going to be a video mostly just about the Canucks in general, because this loss 4-2 Nashville, this is one of those games that you watch where you actually see the Vancouver Canucks and how inferior they are to good teams. And you really start to think about the results. Okay, this team plays well against Chicago. Chicago's a pretty bad team. They play well against Winnipeg. Winnipeg kind of sucks now, too. They barely hold a candle to Nashville for maybe, let's say, half the game. We'll be generous here. Half the game, they hold a candle to Nashville. And then you see the other games, of course, the road trip, Florida, Tampa Bay, Carolina. You see Vancouver go out there and absolutely get destroyed in those games statistically sure they played well and they had chances but when it comes to the cold hard goals for and goals against yeah there's a lot to be desired and so when i see the vancouver canucks play nashville in a game where they get chances in a game where soros makes some good saves but in a game where thatcher demko even though he made himself a few great saves as well it just wasn't enough I look at this team and I say, man, this was Jim Benning's all-in roster. This, this product that we're seeing on the ice was, for all intents and purposes, Jim Benning's last hoorah. This right here was what Benning wanted to go out on with because he felt in the offseason, whether that be due to the powers above like the Aquilinis or due to a personal goal setting thing that the guy had for himself for some reason i don't know what that reason is definitively benning felt like he had to make the playoffs he felt okay we gotta do this like we gotta get those ticket sales up maybe it's aquilini speaking into his ear on a headset saying okay we gotta get in there we gotta make more money we gotta do this we gotta do that i don't really know but either way the vancouver canucks were going all in this offseason. That's why they made those trades for Erickson, Beagle, Roussel. They traded away the ninth overall pick, which became Dylan Genther, who was a very good prospect for the Arizona Coyotes. They acquired Garland. They acquired OEL. We said this in the previous video, or a few videos ago. I forgot what it was, but OEL is a good defenseman. But is he seven point something million dollars good? Absolutely not. He's not that good. I know he scored today, but he's not that good. This is the roster that with all of its cap flaws combined within, was supposed to be the roster that Benning went out on a bang on. This was the roster that Jim Benning was like, yeah, I'm gonna save my job with this roster. And you can't tell me he didn't believe that. Like, you're an NHL GM, you have to go out there, you have to make trades, you have to be confident in the product you have on the ice. If you're not confident that your guys are good enough to get the job done, you can be like Paul Maurice in Winnipeg. You can just step down. You can say, okay, yeah, my time is done. My time is up. My time is now. You can't see me. My time is now. Okay, wrong lyrics. I get that. But still, you get the point, right? Thank you, Jim, for setting up Patrick Alvine and Rutherford with this roster. A roster that has some good forwards, some good defensemen, some pretty hard work out there on the ice. You can see that the Vancouver Canucks are trying. You can see that Pedersen's getting some chances. You can see that Garland's going out there spinning by guys as he does. You can see Thatcher Demko making a few robberies here and there. But this team just isn't good enough. And we had been really noticing that the past few weeks here, I'm going to say. Sure, winning seven, eight in a row or whatever it was under Boudreaux when he comes in is phenomenal. And seeing the competition that the Vancouver Canucks went out there and defeated, all that win streak was, was an equalizer. All that winning streak did was pull the Vancouver Canucks from their jockstraps and it said, okay, you are no longer one of the worst teams we have seen in a very long time, statistically speaking, you're now just still on the very far outskirts of the playoffs. Like, you went from bottom of the league territory to just above bottom in the league territory. And it took the team seven plus wins to get there in a row. And so now, 
you look at where this team is when they play a team like Nashville, a team that just has so much going on for them. Goaltending, UC Soros, he's got that. Goal scoring, you've got Tanner Janot going out there. Rookie sensation, scoring goals left, right, and center. And of course, Philip Forsberg almost getting a hat trick twice in this game. He had two cracks at the empty net that were both thwarted away by Tyler Myers, I believe. But just see the quality of goals that these guys are able to score. Tanner Janot, hey, he's getting the rebound goals. You get a lot of Canucks that can go out there and maybe try to put in some rebounds, like Highmore and Lamico and all them. But Tanner Janot, one of the guys over here who's been scoring all season, and he gets one here today. Philip Forsberg gets himself what is an absolutely brilliant one-time goal on the power play. Imagine that. Imagine scoring goals on the power play. Couldn't be Vancouver, eh? Forsberg goes out there and absolutely drills one from the top of the left face-off circle, right-handed shot. It's like an Ovi slapper, and he goes out there and hammers it down. It's a perfect shot. Top cheese. And sure, the Vancouver Canucks went out there, and they got themselves two goals in the first period. It was a very action-packed first period of play. Lots of goal-scoring opportunities, lots of goals scored, period. There were four goals scored in that first period. But all the Canucks are able to get in this one is a breakaway. It's a two-on-one. Lamico goes over to Highmore, who finds himself in on a breakaway. It was a two-on-one turned breakaway because the defender committed to Lamico on the side. And then, of course, you had yourselves Oliver ekman Larson, who came in with a, as Parker Pucks dubbed it, a 360 no-scope. He turns around, spins around at the blue line, and fires it towards the goal. It's kind of like a lacrosse shot because of the way the puck leaves the edge of his stick. And it droops down. It initially looked like a Miller goal, because he was in front with the screen, but no, it goes right by Miller. Miller was just kind of trying to get out of the way there. And it is a two-goal performance here for Vancouver, despite the fact that they had so many other power play opportunities. I'm sorry, Jason King, whoever runs this power play, but this 2D strategy, it's just not working. Oliver ekman Larson's good. Like, I like OEL. It's just, is he what the Canucks need on that side on the power play? Honestly, I would say no. The Vancouver Canucks have had such a strange problem over the past few years when it comes to the second power play. The second power play doesn't get anything done. They don't get any goals. It's always been the top power play unit. When the bubble, guess what? It's Miller, it's Besser, it's Petey, it's Horvat, and it's Hughes. It's that unit. Everybody else, like Schmidt from last year, Garland this year, Pod Coles and Hoaglander this year as well, they all go out there, they never produce. And OEL trying to force this guy to get some points by putting him on the top power play. Like, I'm sorry. Why do the Predators get so many shorthanded opportunities? This team does not have a shorthanded goal on the year. And they almost got one here today. They were a few seconds away from getting one here today. As I believe it was Ryan Johansson who came in right as the Canucks power play in the first period expired. He came in, shot it, it went in. Was it the first period, second period? I don't really care. This is kind of the indicator, I guess, of where the Canucks are. And it's just not good enough. Take a look at what happened today in the NHL. Okay, San Jose went out there, and they lost in overtime. They got a point. Calgary, they're currently losing right now, so not really the best for the Flames. It's 3-1 Dallas as I record this video, so Calgary likely won't be getting any points. But, like, you take a look at the playoff race, you take a look at Vancouver, I mean, they're back at 500. They've got 46 points and now 46 games played. Edmonton plays tomorrow. They're at 47 points. San Jose, 48 points. I get it. Games in hand, whatever. It's kind of the same there. But Calgary, this team has 40 games played, soon to be 41. Even if they don't get any more points and they stay at 48, they've still got such a big lead in points percentage, dude. Anaheim, LA, Vegas, these teams are kind of in that unreachable territory now, I would say, based off of how well they've been performing. And now you take a look at it and it's like, yeah, this is the team that Benning built to try to save his job. Even with a very good, very different coach in Bruce Boudreaux comparative to Travis Green, the team still isn't good enough. This team is trying, but they just can't beat those behemoths. They can't find ways to win against Tampa or Florida or Carolina or Nashville here. Sure, there's the odd win once in a while, but like, we're at the middle point of the season, dude. We're starting to see this pattern that when the good teams really start to say, okay, we're going to go out there and we're going to win, 
that's when Vancouver has a tough time. And so now this game here, 4-2 Nashville, kind of exemplifies that on a grander scale. So, talk to me in the comments what do you think about the Vancouver Canucks and this game here today. I know this wasn't a video about the game, but come on, the Canucks don't play in a week. So, I kind of felt like this was appropriate. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And, bye.